Hi, my name is Troy. I live with my wife of three years in a house just outside of the city. We're modest people, but not because we don't have money. We do, but that money almost entirely goes on my wife's medical care. You see, I'm a doctor. I work almost all the time, picking up extra shifts when I can, so that I can afford to pay for her medical bills. And any other time I have free, I used to do what I can in our home to keep it clean and habitable, especially since my wife spent most of the day in bed or on the sofa. She had an illness when she was younger that wrecked her immune system, so she was prone to illness throughout the year and got tired easily. It was hard, but she'd been like this the entire time I had known her. I knew what I was getting into when I married her, and although she has her bad days, I love her just as equally then as I do on her good days. On this particular day, she was feeling tired. She'd woken up with me, once again, but I knew that when I left, she'd be asleep once more. I thought you had the morning off. I'm so sorry, doll, but I'm working in the morning. I'll be back this afternoon, I promise. And if you're feeling well enough at any point today, you could try to start packing for our vacation. Or maybe if you're not, then you could write a list, and I'll help you pack this evening. Sure, honey, see you later. Love you. Love you too. I left the house as my wife went back to sleep. I loved my job. I worked as the head of oncology, so I talked with a lot of different kinds of people, from children to the elderly, and each of them were suffering in their own way. Some made it, and others didn't, but every day I was able to return home. I had to separate myself from my job. It was hard, but harder if I let myself focus on the patients when I had to focus on my wife. Ah, Dr. Troy, I thought you were taking the afternoon shift today, but no worry. Good to see you working hard. Good man. Good man. Looks like someone had a good morning, if you know what I mean. I rolled my eyes and went on with my work. My colleges loved to gossip. That afternoon, when I came home, I was pleasantly surprised to find that Marion was downstairs, working in the kitchen. Hey, babe. I'm feeling great today, so I thought I'd make you your favorite. How about some creamy garlic pasta? Do you even need to ask? I didn't think so. It was great to see Marion in such a good mood and with so much energy. I warned her not to overexert herself, but she waved away my worries. Either I'm well tomorrow or I'm not. Either way, I'd rather spend the time I have now doing stuff with you than spend tomorrow holed up in bed and regretting it. I didn't have anything planned for this afternoon anyway. We took a walk around the local park, and then we watched a movie together. We talked well into the night and then fell asleep in each other's arms. As we climbed into bed, I noticed that she'd changed the sheets two days early, and it struck me how sad it is that she predicted that she wouldn't be well enough to do housework again for a few days. Marion deserved better than a life where she only had half the week to live, and even less of it to live well. But days like this are almost enough to make us forget. But still, it's small things like this that remind me, and I'm forced into a crisis of worry. What if she never gets better? What if I'm forced to watch her get worse and worse, and she's forced to live out the rest of her days, stuck in a body that she cannot fix and suffering with each second? What are you thinking about? You changed the sheets today, and I just thought how sad it was that you had to do it today, because you thought you couldn't do it tomorrow. Let's just focus on what we do have and not what we don't, okay? Right now we have a clean bed and each other. What do you want to do with it? The next week went by better than the last year. I felt like things were really pushing in the right direction, and although I was working so much to help cover the costs of her medical care, I was never less inclined to go to work than I was in the days when she was healthy. Don't be hard on yourself. Of course you have to go. You have the responsibility of so many lives on your hands. You're a hard worker. I appreciate it, and I know your patients do too. I'll see you when you get back this evening, and then tomorrow we can go on with our vacation. I felt like a kid waiting for the bell to ring so I could go home. The entire time I was at work, I was bouncing on my feet and tapping my fingers against my thighs. I couldn't wait to get home to Marion, and I couldn't wait until we went on vacation. Have a good holiday, Dr. Troy. Thanks, Nurse Patricia. See you in a week. I was so excited to get home that I had forgotten to worry about my wife's condition. When I arrived at the house, it was quiet and she was in bed, pale and shivering. I called your best friend, Mark. He's going with you tomorrow. But Marion... I've called my parents. They'll come to get me and I'll stay with them while you're gone. You've worked so hard for this. You deserve a break. Besides, Mark just broke up with his girlfriend, remember? 
He needs this too. I was upset that she was unwell, and even more so that she couldn't join us. But she was taking a tone that I was all too familiar with. It meant that she'd made a decision. It was final, and she wasn't willing to hear any arguments against it. Since she wasn't going to be at the house while I was away, I took a precaution and set up a camera in the lounge, facing the sofa and the front door. This way, if someone was to break in, we'd see them. I almost told Marion, but then I thought that knowing about it might just make her worry more. She needs to relax. So the next morning, I met Mark at the airport and we flew to Mexico and got ready to spend a week together at the hotel. The first two days were fine. We drank cocktails by the pool. We played table tennis until our arms ached and we ate so much that we had trouble standing up afterwards. On the third day, I started to get worried. Marion was replying to my messages, but they sounded different. They didn't have the nuance of her way of speaking. She must be a lot sicker than I thought she would be if she can't even answer me properly. I tried calling, but she didn't pick up. Then, I remembered that I'd installed a camera into the living room. Maybe she never left. She often worried about being a burden on me. Perhaps she was worried she would be burdening her parents too. However, when I saw the live stream, it was not my wife, curled into the sofa, watched TV. No, it was my wife, with another man. Isn't that your boss? Isn't he like older than her dad? She's been cheating on me with my boss. Suddenly, things started to make sense. I remembered that every time she was feeling better, my boss also came into work in a really happy mood. Did that mean that they'd been with each other on those days? While I was hard at work, trying to find a way to cover the cost of her medical bills and our rent, she was betraying me? What are you going to do? I'm going to make her regret ever doing this to me. I was angry, but more than that, I was hurt. I thought we were in love, but in reality, she wanted something else. Something I don't understand. I knew I wanted to get payback, so I called her dad and told him that I hadn't heard from Marion in a while. And could he please ask her if she's okay? When he expressed confusion, I faked concern. She's not there? She told me she was going to your house. She was feeling so unwell when I left, and she'd promised to call you, so I just thought, oh no. Maybe she's not been picking up the phone because she can't. Sir, please, you have to go and see if she's okay. Okay, I will go check on her. I felt bad for putting my father-in-law in that position, but I was enraged with what she'd done to me. I knew I needed some kind of payback. Mark and I watched on the camera, as five minutes after I hung up, the door burst open and Marion and my boss were startled away from each other by the arrival of her dad. He shouted out in surprise, which brought our neighbors over to see if they were okay. And I knew that from there, there would be no redemption for Marion. Our neighbors were the worst kind of gossips. Within 10 minutes, I knew that the entire street would know what she had done. Marion, what on earth are you doing? After everything Troy has done for you? And the shame you bring on this family. I hope this old man has a house, because when Troy kicks you out, you certainly won't be invited to stay with us. It was a bitter victory, but I had Mark and a hotel room and an endless supply of drinks to get me through it. I talked with Marion's dad, and he explained everything. I thanked him for letting me know. When I got back, I used the video as evidence when filing for a divorce, and I then kicked her out of the house. As for my boss, well, his wife too found out and divorced him, and he paid her a lot in alimony. His reputation was messed up, so the hospital fired him. Marion now lives with her parents, and I hear her mother is treating her badly after seeing the video, but she deserves it. I'm angry that Marion did this to me, but I'm happy that I eventually caught on. Better to stop it before it gets out of hand than to live a life of lies. Thanks for watching. Please like the video for the algorithm.